Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. Tuesday after the bank holiday weekend. I did take some footage, um, but unfortunately I never got around to editing it. Uh, it was a little bit messy. I basically made loads of pork products. So I'll see if I can piece all this together um, into some type of video for you this week. It'll be a bit uh, choppy though, never mind. We'll see what we can do later on. Today, my main focus is on trying to brew a beer. It's not been the best start of the day, to be fair. So, uh, yeah, the car wouldn't start again this morning. So, I'm starting to think it maybe is the alternator. And the trouble is, I left it in town because I had a drink yesterday. So, I didn't drive home. So, I had to walk to the car, only to find out that it wouldn't start. And then walk in to work, leaving it there where it was. So, I'm going to have to figure something out for that. But it's made me late to work so we're approaching 12 o'clock now and I'm gonna start a brew day but I couldn't dive straight into the brew day because I didn't have the recipe sorted out so what I've been doing is uh, I've taken Mark Cooper's neck oil clone which he shared with us on the uh, on the in the comments on the video way back when I can't remember exactly what uh, video it was I might just have it in front of me on the computer uh, well, the mash was in the morning or something like that. But uh, yeah, anyway, he shared. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you have a look. Have a look at this. So he shared this neck oil recipe with us. There it is. And uh, I've taken that neck oil recipe, excuse me, and I've put it into Beersmith. So using the exact IB um, alpha acids and um, amounts we pop this in for a 21 litre batch and then I've hit the scale button and we've taken it up to a 500 litre batch so if I show you this we'll be able to scale back down to a 19 litre but I'll just change that to 21 and there we go so they're the exact measurements that Mark put into the system for us or onto YouTube should I say and I've just taken them put them into the system and what that's thrown up is um, quite a high ABV and a bitterness ratio of 0.798 with 40 IBUs so I've taken that recipe I've altered it for a hops that I've got in stock so I don't have any Vic Secret or Galaxy so I've subbed them out for Amarillo and Citra where applicable and added a bit more Simcoe in the dry hop so I've changed the recipe somewhat um, and then we've scaled it down to represent Neckol's true ABV which is 4.3% and that altered of course the bitterness ratio so I've dropped the Centennial hop out completely and I've dropped the amount of Columbus to give us the same bitterness ratio down here which means that we're now down to 32 IBUs instead of 40.9 so hopefully that kind of makes sense to you uh, and I also changed the alpha acid content of the hops to actually what I've got in stock that's not 2013 though ignore that I just haven't changed that bit yet uh, our Citra is uh, actually 2018 T90 pellet so yeah that's what we've had to do this morning uh, so the next step for me is shoot downstairs and get the grain weighed out well well I must apologize you've literally seen me put the camera oh actually I've got a better idea Right folks, because today is going to be a bit of a busy day, I'm going to show you a couple of the videos that I shot on the weekend to act as filler because I'm not going to pick any uh, footage up today in the brewery really. So this is what I got up to 
on Friday and Saturday, or was it Saturday and Sunday, over the weekend. Good morning folks, welcome to the vlog. It is Bank Holiday Monday here in the UK, so we've got a day off. Just check the mics plugged in correctly. Uh, I'll just kill this extractor for a moment. So, over the weekend, um, I didn't get to film it because uh, I was having too much of a good time. But over the weekend, we made pork crunch. These are called chicharron or uh, pork crunch here in the UK. And they are absolutely spot on. That's for another video. Today, we're going to try and make proper traditional British pork scratchings because I want to make our own for the pub. So I tried this yesterday and I ended up burning the oil. This is the oil that we used yesterday, vegetable oil, and I left it unattended like an idiot and uh, well I think that oil spent now. It doesn't smell burnt but I burnt the scratchings inside. Uh, so today we're going to take a different tack on it we're going to use lard. Now I know lard has a lower smoke point than oil, but I think it's the traditional way of cooking pork scratchings. So we've got a great big pan here, and I went out to Morrison's this morning and I bought 14 packs of lard. So what we're going to do is cook our scratchings in it and then cover the pan over until the next day. And then if we continue to cook scratchings for the pub, we'll be able to reuse the oil filter the oil, reuse the oil every time we want to cook scratchings. We won't have to go out and buy lard every time, provided that this works. If not, then the whole experiment's cost me eight pounds, including a bottle of lemonade, which isn't bad. So I'm gonna drop a few blocks of oil, of lard into the pan. Oh, that's already starting to melt. So we've got a great big, this is my old brewing pan. Great big old brewing pan here. So we're going to try and uh, pop all 14 blocks of lard in there. And I've just picked up the rind for crackling from Morrison's, you can see. It's priced at 150 a kilo. You could probably get it cheaper from your butcher. I imagine most of the cost is this plastic tray. But we're going to cut these up and we're going to try to fry them. So I'm going to pop the rest of these packets of lard in here. And we're going to bring the whole pot up to 160 degrees centigrade. And then also this morning, I've got my high-low thermometer out so I can monitor the temperature and an alarm will go off if it goes too high. So yes, I'm on it. So we've got all the lard in the pan and it's melted down now into a liquid. The temperature is about 115 degrees C so far. We're shooting for a target of 160. But before we prepare the pork rinds, I just want to have a little bit of a bonus. I've not cooked with lard for a very, very long time. And the boy has never ever tried chips cooked in lard. So we're gonna do a cheeky, chunky chip session before we go ahead and do the pork scratchings because I've got this virgin uh, rendered lard here. So I'm really looking forward to that. And then all we're gonna do once I've finished that and filled myself up with dirty, dirty chips is we're just gonna take a knife, we're gonna keep this rolled up as it is, and we're just gonna cut it into strips about the width of your finger and uh, well you'll see they'll be going right in. Okay so we've taken the temperature of the oil a little bit over our target of 160 for the chips we're going to do these at 170 the flash point of the lard is about 182 so we don't want to go much higher than that not the flash point the smoke point so let's have a look in the pan and let's get some of these chips in that lovely lovely lard. So that's about as close as I want to get this uh, camera lens to our our lard and that's why 
because of the cackle and fizz of putting these chips in. Oh, look at that though. Okay, so all the chips are now flowing to the surface, which tells me that they're about done. And the temperature's beginning to climb again. So let's get these little beauties scooped out. And onto some kitchen paper. A beautiful bowl of chips. This is gonna do nothing whatsoever for my arteries. So I'm just gonna leave them there to cool for a moment on that kitchen paper, and while we do that, we're going to chop the pork rinds and we're going to get them into the fat because it's nice and hot so there's no time to lose. So chopping board, three packs of pork rinds, let's go for it. And we can just drop these straight in as soon as, as soon as we've cut them. Right, that's the hands washed. Let's just have a little peek in here what's going on. You can see the pork rinds are fizzing away. We're going to monitor this temperature now, bring it back up to 100 and 60 degrees. That's the sweet spot between 150 and 170. I'm going to let these cook for about an hour and 20 minutes. So while those lovely pork rinds are cooking away, let's get in to our beautiful, beautiful looking plate of lard cooked chips. Just need a sprinkle of salt over these and I'm going to put some vinegar on, but the camera's in the way of the cupboard. There we go. Sprinkle of malt vinegar. Let's dive right in. Oh. Oh, like my mother used to make. Oh. Delicious. We have finally reached the end of the cooking time, 80 minutes. I'll just quickly show you what it looks like in the pan before we pull it out. Here you can see that looks like scratchings and it also looks like there's not as much in there as when we started because they do really uh, lose quite a lot of their volume. Obviously all the water's gone out of it, you see. So we'll get as many out as we can. Uh, maybe that's not the best tool for the job. Let's try these grippers. And we want to leave as much of the oil behind as possible, of course. And there we are. One bowl full of crunchy, crispy, crackly pork scratchings. Doesn't that look tasty? So we're gonna let them cool down, we'll season them, and then we will get stuck right in. Right, Gemma's back, let's do a quick taste test then. Oh dear. <laughs> right, here's the crackles. What, this is the crackling? Pork scratchings. Yeah? Mm -hmm. They're not bad at all. 
in fact they're bloody lovely. Oh my god, you need strong tea. Mm. Right, that's it. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Well, there we go. That's definitely filled out the vlog for me a little bit. And doing that today um, has given me time to get the control panels up and running for the cold rooms. And you can hear in the background, we have one of the ventilation fans running now. It's freezing cold in here. Uh, it's working perfectly and it has opened the valve for the pump. The pump has switched on. It's recirculating what will be the coolant. Um, and what I've decided to do is put a four-way junction in here. So this communicates to all the STC boxes, obviously power for the PSU, a cable in, and then power for the pump. Very simple. And then we're gonna mount this PSU up here out the way of the kids and what have you. Um, and that should just be fine sat on the wall. I was gonna enclose it within the actual unit itself, but I was concerned about uh, getting condensation on it through drips, seeing as we're gonna be running it really cold. So that's it for the day, folks. Um, it is actually half past seven now. Uh, I'm gonna go and see if I can uh, get the car to start. We've got some jump leads in the Peugeot, and uh, if that doesn't work, then, well, that'll be one of the jobs tomorrow. Oh, and the brew today went seamlessly. I hit my targets. I'm very impressed. Big thanks to Mark for sharing that recipe with us, even though I have changed it, and, uh, well, I tend to do that with most recipes anyway, just to get it right on the kit. Uh, drop the ABV and what have you. Tomorrow's a brew day as well. We're going to do the vacant. Uh, so we'll see how we get along with the camera then and uh, join me for it to see what we get up to. Cheers folks, we'll see you then.